many of you have told me you're struggling with how to get a buyer's attention. So in this video, I show you a great way to get your name in front of new customers, and that's by responding to sources sought notices. And this video is a complete course on the subject. So by the end of this video, you will be ready to respond to a sources sought notice. First, we'll go over what is a source of sought and why you should respond. And then I'm going to walk you through exactly how you find these things. And then we'll go over a current source of sought notice and I'll show you exactly how I would respond to it. Finally, we'll discuss tips for a successful response and common mistakes to avoid. So what is a source of sought notice? Well, it's a summary posted by a government agency that says they're looking for companies that can perform some piece of work they need done. And just to be absolutely clear on one thing, a source of sought notice is not a solicitation. And when you respond, you're not submitting a bid. You're not submitting pricing. So I'm sure you're wondering if it's not a proposal, why should I take the time to respond? Well, first of all, it's an opportunity for you to introduce yourself and your products or services. This may be the government buyer's first impression of you and your company. So it's a way for them to get to know your capabilities and for you to build a positive image as a government vendor. But the big advantage and the main reason to respond is that this is your opportunity to actually influence the acquisition. First, you can use a source of sought to limit your competition for a contract. There's an important rule of government contracting called the rule of two. And it means that if government receives two or more responses that meet the criteria, the project can be set aside for small businesses or any specific category of small business. Let me give you some examples to make this clear. If the government gets responses from two qualified small businesses, they can set the contract aside for small businesses. What that means is that a large business can't bid on the contract. You'll only be competing against small businesses. Or say they receive responses from two qualified service-disabled veteran-owned small businesses. Then they can limit competition for the job to just service-disabled veteran-owned small businesses. Second, and what really sophisticated businesses do, is they use these responses to actually influence the ultimate solicitation to their advantage. The reason is these sources sought notices are written early in the procurement process, and buyers may use your response in crafting the ultimate statement of work. So the way you influence them is by making recommendations and by calling out your strengths as well as the weaknesses of your competition. Let me give you some examples. Let's say you sell a product that has a unique feature that your competitor doesn't have. Then in your response, you would explain why the government needs that particular feature. Or say your landscaping company has an environmental certification that your competitor doesn't have, then in your response, you would explain the benefits of that certification. And if all that wasn't enough incentive, sometimes these responses lead to sole source awards, which means the agency doesn't compete a contract, they just award it directly to your company. Or the agency may put you on their short list of qualified contractors, and then you may receive solicitations that they don't send out to all companies. So all of that is why I recommend responding to sources sought notices. So now I want to show you exactly how you find these notices. And you find them posted on this government website, sam.gov. And I do recommend that you sign into the site by clicking on the sign in button here in the top right corner. Now you can follow along with me in this video and do this search without signing in, but 
You'll need to sign in to access the full capabilities of the website to do things like saving your searches and setting up notifications. And if you haven't already created an account, you can do it by clicking that same sign in button. So to do this search, I first click here on search and then under select domain, I select contract opportunities. And now we use this panel on the left to filter our results to what we care about. If you've seen my video on how to search for contract opportunities, you know that this is the exact same process we use to search for contracts to bid on. But today, I'm searching for sources sought notices. So under notice type, I select sources sought. And then under dates, we can filter by the update date or the date the response is due. I want to show you what's out there right now. So I'm going to filter by things where the response is due in the next three months. And now we see that right now there are 690 of these sources sought notices. We can download these results, which could make it easier to scan through them all. And we can also save the search to make it easy to run it again in the future. And the way to do those things is by clicking this actions button in the top right. You can also filter the results by different things to narrow down your search. For example, if you knew you were targeting the VA, you could set the agency to be the VA, and then you would only see opportunities posted by the VA. And we see here there are 92 of these sources sought notices posted by the VA. Now I'm going to delete that filter because I want to show you notices posted by any agency. You can also filter your results by NATES code, but when you're doing this, please remember to search for each NATES code that applies to your business because most of you have more than one NATES code. For this demo today, I'm going to narrow the results down to NATES code 238220. That's the NATES code for plumbing, heating, and air conditioning contractors. And you see that it automatically updates my search results. So now we see that there are seven results. And if you click on the title, it takes you to the actual sources sought notice. So I'm going to click on this one here and we'll walk through it together. And I'll show you how I would respond to this notice. The first thing it lists is the title. That's HVAC replacement, White Swan, Washington. And the notice ID is here. The government agency that's issuing the notice is the Indian Health Service and the contracting office is the Portland area Indian Health Service. So I would include each of those pieces of information in my response. Under general information, we find the response due date and time, which in this case is 5 p.m. Eastern time on September 19th. And in the section titled classification, we see the NATES code is 238220 and the place of performance is White Swan, Washington. Next is the description. It tells us the Indian Health Service is conducting a source of sought to identify potential vendors capable of performing HVAC replacement services as well as a test adjustment and balance of the installed equipment. And here they explain that this is not a solicitation for proposals. It says no proposals are being requested or accepted with this RFI. So just to be clear, don't send them a proposal. They don't want a proposal at this time. The next section is where they summarize the scope of work. In other words, here's where they describe the work they need done. They say there are two Lennox residential HVAC units and a recent inspection discovered the units don't provide fresh air ventilation as required by code. And then it says for this project, the contractor shall replace the two existing Lennox heat pumps with a single right-sized code compliant unit. And here you can see they've broken down the work they want performed into eight elements. And then in addition, they have an attachment that you can download, and we'll find that below. And that document contains the full draft of the scope of work. Now this next paragraph says, the work will be performed under NATES code 238220 with a size standard of $16.5 million. 
every NAITS code has a size standard. And here's why it's important. What the size standard means is that if your company's annual revenue is less than $16.5 million, then your business qualifies as a small business for this opportunity. Now, the next section is labeled responses, and here's where they're giving us the instructions on how to respond. They start by telling us that the way to submit the response is by email, and they give us the name and email address of the person to submit the response to. And they say responses must be received no later than 2 p.m. Pacific time on September 19th. And then they say responses shall include. What that word shall means is they want you to include every one of these things in your response. And they've got the things numbered one through five. Now, what I would do is copy the numbered elements exactly as they're shown here. I would number them exactly as they've numbered them. I would type one company information and then list the information they request in exactly the order they request it. List your company name, website, physical address, and SAM UEI code. If you're not familiar with that UEI code, that's a really important number for you to understand. The UEI is your business's unique entity ID. It's a 12-character ID. And when you register your business in SAM, they assign your business a UEI code. So that's how you get it. And this is the number that contracting officers will use to look up your business. So I would always include your SAM UEI. Next, I would type two point of contact and provide the name, phone number, and email address of the person in your business who they can contact. Next, they ask, if a solicitation is issued, will your firm be submitting a proposal? So in my response, I would copy the question and then respond yes to indicate my intention to submit a proposal. In number four, they want to know your type of business. Now remember when we talked about NAITS codes and size standards. If your annual revenue is less than $16.5 million, then you qualify as a small business for this opportunity. So for type of business, you would respond small business. And if you have any additional certification, say you're certified as a hub zone business, then you would also list that certification here. And the next paragraph says, if your business is Indian owned, there's a form and some additional documentation they want you to submit. And next, number five, is the experience submission requirements. They say to submit at least two, but no more than five projects completed by your firm within the last seven years that are similar to the work that will be required under this project. And they go on to list the information they want you to provide about each project. So you would list out each project separately and for each one, you'll answer these questions. A, whether you were the prime contractor or a subcontractor. B, the dates of performance. C, the contract value, location, completion date, and complexity of the job. D, list whether the project is a federal, state, tribal, or commercial project. If you don't have previous government experience, that is okay. It is okay to list all commercial projects. And E, provide a reference. What they're looking for here is the name, telephone number, and email address of a person they can contact to confirm that you did the job. And that's the end of the response instructions. They conclude by saying, if you have any questions, you may email them to this person and they give you the name and email address and they're being pretty clear that they want all communications by email. So I would not call this person. If I had questions, I would email them. The next section is attachments. And the first attachment is that draft scope of work. And you can click on the file to download it. And the second attachment 
is that form they want you to complete if your business is Indian owned. And the final section is contact information. And they're giving us the address of the contracting office and the contact information for their point of contact. When you start looking at these sources sought notices, you'll quickly see that everyone is different and they can vary widely. There isn't a standard format that contracting officers follow. You might see one that just asks for a very short, simple response, and then you find another one that wants you to go into detail on your technical abilities and your management processes. So to prepare your response, you really just have to read the notice and be sure to give them all the information they're asking for. In fact, I recommend you organize your response to address the requirements in the same order and using the exact same numbering system that they use in the sources sought notice. That way, you'll be sure you've covered each of the requirements and the reviewer will be able to easily find your response to each item. A mistake lots of beginners make is including some required information, but not making it super easy to find. And then the reviewer can't find it and says it was missing from the response. So remember to make it really easy for your reviewer to find the requested information. Next, I want to go over some things that you should pretty much always include in your response. I'm showing you here a sample I typed up from the sources sought that we walked through together. When you do this yourself, you'll put this on your company letterhead. Start out with the submittal date and of course, submit it before it's due. And always reference the office issuing the notice and list the name of the person you're submitting your response to and the email address you're sending it to. And then list the exact title and notice ID number. And also, they'll probably ask you to submit your response by email. So I recommend you include the notice ID and the title in the subject line of your transmittal email. Next comes your company information. Include the full name, address, and website of your company and include your SAM UEI number and provide the name, telephone number, and email address of the person within your company whom they can contact. And always list your business type. Sometimes you'll see the government refer to this as your size status. What they want to know is whether your business is a small business, and also what additional certifications you have. So you would write small business, and then if you had additional certifications like 8A or HUBZone, you would list them as well. After that, answer their questions and give them what they asked for. For example, the notice we walked through asked for two, but not more than five past projects. So you can give them two, three, four, or five projects but don't give them seven projects. And the way to present the information is to list each project separately. And I would always include the following information for each project. The customer, the contract number, the period of performance, the dollar value of the contract, and a point of contact in the customer's organization whom they can contact and then describe the work you did providing specific examples of experience that's directly relevant to the scope of work. I'm showing you here the scope of work for that HVAC replacement job so you can see what one of these looks like. The most important part of your response is where you describe your experience showing how it's relevant to the scope of work. And try to tie your experience to the specific work elements listed in the scope of work, addressing each task or work element they list, because if you skip one, the reviewers could conclude that you don't have capability in that area. Okay, now you know how to respond. Let's go over the common mistakes people make and what to avoid in your responses. The first mistake is providing extraneous information and not staying focused on the government's need. 
this is not the time to describe 15 different things that your company does. If they say they need a painter, this isn't the time to tell them you do painting and you're also a notary. And you don't want to waste valuable space on a fancy appearance. What I mean by that is that often they'll give you a page limit for your response. If you're limited to four pages, I wouldn't waste one of them on your one-size-fits-all glossy brochure. This isn't the time to use that brochure. In fact, I wouldn't spend my time trying to be pretty or fancy. Instead, I would focus my time on customizing the response to the particular need identified in the sources sought notice. Also, some companies find sources sought response templates online, and then they send them in as is without tailoring them to fit the notice they're responding to. But by now, you know not to do that. Another really common mistake is talking in generalities. And let me give you an example of what I mean. A company might say, our company has 12 years experience carrying out a variety of contracts for multiple customers and has always satisfied its customers' requirements. That type of general comment isn't going to help you as much as giving specific examples of work you've done that's directly relevant to the need they've identified. Finally, some vendors submit canned responses on things they're really not capable of performing. Maybe they're hoping it'll lead to other work. But this isn't the way to build a positive image for your company, and really, it could just piss them off for wasting their time. Hey friends, you now know everything you need to start submitting responses to sources sought notices. For more tips on how to get in front of potential customers, check out my video on how to find networking events because those events are great opportunities for you to meet potential customers as well as potential teaming partners. You'll find the link to that video in the notes below. Thanks for joining me today. Be sure to click the like button and I'll see you next time.